first, we start with Dr. Nita Bajor, a family physician at Oakview Medical Associates. And today we're talking about foods that are high in protein. I know a lot of us were trying to be healthy in the new year, and protein is an amazing source to help boost that uh, amount of time you feel full. And right. just uh, I know it has a lot of nutrients that your body needs. We, we need protein mm -hmm. in our diet. So we have a lot of things on the table here. Uh, on this side, we have more of the animal-based right. proteins. And then on this side, we have the plant-based proteins. So let's talk about the difference between animal and plant-based proteins. Great. Um, so proteins are the building blocks of our bodies, and we need it for immune function. And so the broad sources are plants and animal sources. In the plant-based sources, those are you know found uh, in nature. They're whole foods. They what they are? They're very rich in micronutrients, which are lacking in the animal group. Also, the plant-based sources have fiber, which is not there in the animal um, sources. The essential amino acids, which are little tiny building blocks of the proteins, are found in uh, plants. And a lot of the animal sources contain them because cattle and chicken, and they, they feed on the seeds and the grasses and the soil, so that's how animal sources end up having more protein and more amino acids. Now there's 12 essential amino acids, 11, correct? Yeah. 11, mm -hmm. Do you, can you get all of those from plant? Uh, proteins? Most of them are found in, yes, they're found okay. in uh, plant sources, and um, there's three of them that are absolutely essential. Those are isoleucine, leucine, and um, valine, which are, you know, the branch uh, amino acids, which are very good for the health, so. So what plant-based proteins have those amino acids? Because I know that's what's yes. really essential. That's what these are full of. Right. And it's my understanding some plants don't have as many essential That's right. Amino so plant-based sources like soy, tempeh, spirulina, legumes. So these are lentils. And then we have beans, like kidney beans, uh, quinoa. Uh, chia seeds, um, those are all very good and essential amino acids. Okay, and do we need animal-based proteins? Uh, do, do you That's think a great question. Yeah, yeah, do you think we really need that in our diet or kind of what's yeah, your take on that? Um, Overall, animal-based protein, you know, they're higher in content per gram of um, source, so they'll have a higher quantity of protein, but the quality is not necessarily that good. So you want to really look at the individual patient, their age, their sex, their health history, and then kind of decide how much of the plant-based protein and the animal-based protein should be in the diet. So. Okay. So it might be depending on who you are as yes. a person. And also depending on who you are, um, we all are different sizes, different really? heights, weights, all of that. So is there a difference of how much protein we should consume based on how much we weigh or how big we are? Absolutely. So as a general rule, it's about 0.5 gram per pound of lean body mass is the protein requirement for a human body. Um, however, you know, older people, depending on if they have kidney disease, we kind of modify those numbers. Um, in general, me men may need a little more because they have a higher lean body mass, mm. uh, especially athletes, people that are training, um, that are consuming much uh, or expending much more need to have much more protein. So. Okay, no, that, that's really good to know. And um, what about, uh, you were saying men and women, that, that they don't need more, but what about like cheap ways to find uh, sources of protein? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, plant-based protein sources are not that expensive, but the perishable ones like the greens and the, my daughter's favorite, the colored peppers, those, those can, um, they can go bad if they're not consumed, right? So mm -hmm. you have good old peanut butter, nut butter, you have oats, those are very affordable, uh, and they last, they have a good shelf life, so definitely one should consider those. Okay, yeah, no, that's good to know, because I know, like, uh, particularly with meat, it's oh, yeah. getting so expensive. Yes. Eggs, um, I feel like cheese, it's, it's always going up as well, so I think we're all trying to figure out cheap ways to stay healthy um, and stay on a good diet, but, uh, not break the break the bank. That's right. So. That's important. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for all of these tips. Hopefully, it helps some people out there. Um, any other recommendations you have for uh, people who are looking to maintain their weight and looking at various proteins? So, protein overall does help burn fat, and um, you gain more muscle mass. So, that's an important thing to consider when you're trying to lose weight, get healthy. Uh, if you're looking at, you know, reversing diabetes and improving your metabolic health, I think just talking to your physician or whoever you uh, see for the nutrition and the meal planning is really important. Planning ahead for the week um, so that you don't break your bank. Really making sure you are knowledgeable about the... These are very easily found in the stores. I mean, you have like ready um, lentils nowadays. So just trying to add a little bit at a time. I think it can get overwhelming, but just everyone can just take one step at a time. I think it'll be really good. So. And one last question I meant to ask earlier. Do we need more protein as we age? 
That's a great question. Yes, overall we do because we um, we lose our lean body mass, so our bone density goes down, our muscle mass goes down. So you need more protein, more healthy quality of protein. But also as you age, it's really important to have um, the entire lifestyle in perspective. So not just load up on protein and you know. Um, uh, continue to smoke, or so you've got to have a well-balanced lifestyle. So sure. Exercise, yes. exercising, and taking care of yourself. Um, yes, as you said, the plant-based proteins—they have the fiber and a lot of the other nutrients that right. can help you get on the right track. That's right. Animal-based proteins and you know dairy also is fortified with a lot of the micronutrients. They do contain calcium, vitamin D. Um, the animal um, sources of protein also have B12, iron, um, calcium. But you've got to remember that's up in the food chain. So animals are eating the plants in the soil, and that's mm -hmm. how they have those minerals so you can cut the food chain and get more green leafy vegetables broccoli mushrooms and all these lentils and of course it's hard to give up animal um, protein altogether we love our mm -hmm. meat so just try to have a well-balanced diet and keep that in mind a little bit of both yes all right thank you dr Bajor. you're welcome thank you